I've compiled a complete Terraria modded recap of every major content mod. Let's summarize all of it so far and give you a rough roadmap of what to expect for each mod in the future. The Aquis mod has well been ported to version 1.4.4 of Tmod Loader with a new Beta 3 release. This includes the addition of the Galactic Clockwork, an item which can recharge the Enchanted Sundial, the Record Breaker, a melee axe which can freeze enemies on hit, and a minor rework to the game stuff, which has all these changes that I'll show on screen. Aquis has also began posting monthly modded news updates for their own mod, which you can check out on this website here. This includes some additional spoilers for the new Mirror's Callblade, fancy text for dedicated items, improved builder quests, and a new OmniPaint UI interface. Furthermore, it's planned to include their very own Zenith Seed features, so you will need to check out this mod out if you're looking for your first ever Get Fixed Boy Seed modded run. Now moving on to the Calamity mod, progress is still continuing towards 1.4.4, with no estimated time at the moment. They have showcased new resprites for the Aquatic Scourge, as well as the Cygnus with completely new animations. Some weapons have also received updated sprites, such as the Catastrophe Claymore and Devastation. And oh my gosh, does these things look absolutely gorgeous. Some new armors will be introduced into Calamity, as well as planned reworks for some existing ones. I'll flash all of these on screen right now, but definitely check out this video over here if you want a more detailed explanation. There are additionally a bunch of miscellaneous change logs planned for the upcoming 1.4.4 port, which you can read on screen. And while we're on the topic of Calamity, I wanted to give an update on the Catalyst mod, responsible for the most amazing Astro Gelodon rework which fun fact is also getting re however that's not what I wanted to talk about. They announced plans back in 2022 to merge Calamity Whips and Calamity Flamethrowers together and in June we finally got some teasers to show you. First is the Resonant Striker, a post Dragon Folly Whip which looks like this in the current version and this is what it will look like reworked with trails of red electricity targeting enemies. There is also the Exo Flamethrower on the left and the planned updated one on the right. Such an amazing visual improvement and it's going to be so sick using more subclasses in Calamity. In June, Fargo's received another round of reworks to the Life Eye boss. There isn't any really big major changes, so I'll just list all the changes on screen right here. Next mod on the list is the Glory mod, which has firstly been ported to 1.4.4, as well as a full set of loot for the Ignited Idol boss fight. For those who don't know, this boss was reworked in April of 2023, being a much difficult version of Torch God. Its core mechanic relies on the lamps, which grant hearts on kills, but also shrinks the arena border. You should definitely check out this video right here for the full fight. Since my last recap, the 1.5 Infernum update has well been released, sadly marking the end of the mod, with insane boss reworks, new items, structures, I'm sure you've heard plenty from me talking about Infernum. They will still be porting the mod to future versions of Terraria, however all the content is now done. The next mod up is the mod of redemption. Notable changes I haven't covered include a new chicken army event with a reworked Foul Emperor. This mini boss is extremely early game, summon using an egg crown. Defeating this boss will drop the Foul Warhorn, giving you access to the newest Foul Morning event. This can range from wave 1 of chickens, wave 3 of roosters, and even the later waves being filled with an insane amount of chickens. For a pre-hard mode boss event, this was quite enjoyable. There was also a new Kaveya mini boss fight, which can be fought post Skeletron near the Lost Portal. This has some pretty cool mechanics, and the character behaves very similar to a regular Terraria one. This mod was also ported to 1.4.4, with a lot of change logs to cover. The main change I spotted include the Solus Caverns biome being reintroduced, so it's the perfect time to tell you to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the modern news that's coming soon. The next mod I want to talk about is the Remnants mod, with a bunch of world generation improvements, which includes a complete redesign of the Marble Caves, a rework to the Urban Ruins with a brand new underworld structure. Furthermore, they added Sky Lakes, and finally a massive redesign to the Jungle Temple. As of the 22nd of June, this has also been ported to version 1.4.4, and it is most likely a magical lab of some sort will be designed and accessed by the new Shimmer Biome, as well as a revamp to Living Trees. And all this content that I'm showing, I am super excited to explore this mod further. Shadows of Abaddon has showcased an early rework to the Desperado, with visually beautiful bullet traces and explosions. We also got a look at the new Prismatic Surge minions, which I'm currently showing in the background. You can expect a beta release for 1.4 within this month or within the month of August. Now let me ask you a question. 
What is your favorite race? Huh? Now, I know this might be a bit controversial, but mine has to be the Haifa Hijinx race. The Retribution mod has showcased a new teaser for race contracts, which require the player to parkour and try to get to the end as fast as possible. This involves a new blue mushroom biome race, with bounceable mushroom pads to spring up from, as well as boost pads which propel you forward. Spirit Mod has been ported to both versions 1.4 and 1.4.4 of Team Mod Loader. With this comes typical changes of Beast Roost support, additional pylons, Master Mode relics, and more. Other notable changes include a complete rework to blaster weapons and melee clubs. I've recapped the entire change list which you can watch right here. And with that being said, let's move on to the split mod. This has unfortunately still not been ported to versions 1.4 and onwards. However, I do have some insane upcoming content to show you. Firstly is the updated Snow Halition attack. And just look at this, like this is beautiful. They've also updated some support abilities for older magic weapons like the Fighting Cold, Firecaster's Blessing and Secret of the Shadows. We also have a spoiler of the rework Solistus, which looks absolutely amazing. Instead of me just explaining this to you, just check it out for yourself. Doesn't that weapon just look amazing? But Melee and Mage aren't the only ones getting loved in this update, as the Summoner class will also be getting content as well. You can check all the full spoilers over on the social media platforms which I've linked in the description below. And looking back at the previous weapon spoiler from February, I am definitely excited for this mod. Next mod on the list is the Spooky mod. Apart from being ported to version 1.4.4 of Team Mod Loader, they have added some cool content, so here's the general rundown. A new friendly NPC, the Little Eye, will have quests, in which we have to gather certain materials to craft a special potion for him. These will give you unique rewards, so you should try to talk to him throughout the game. Along with the new NPC, there is also now sentient weapons. A new mechanic where you can combine a sentient heart with vanilla weapons at Little Eye's Cauldron. Sentient weapons aren't meant to be direct upgrades, and transforming them into something more crazy, so it's definitely worth checking out. Furthermore, there is a new egg incursion event, an endurance style invasion that takes place pre Oro and Boro. The event doesn't have a typical kill counter, but the progress bar will increase over time while you're in Valley of the Eyes. A new biome, the Swampy Cemetery, was also introduced. It serves as an above ground graveyard biome, which is a pretty nice quality of life addition. And descending in this biome will lead you to the catacombs, where the new catacomb darkness mechanic was introduced. While you're in this biome, your vision will be darkened, allowing you to only see a certain distance ahead of you in any direction. And speaking of the catacombs, expect this to be expanded in the future along with the new and improved Big Burn Arena. Now, the next mod needs no introduction. I'm pretty sure every single Terraria YouTuber, including myself, has made videos on the Starlight River, and rightfully so, with three epic bosses like Auroracle, the Glassweaver, and Saros. I will save you some time, as I'm assuming 99% of you have probably seen this before. But what you may not have seen is this upcoming spoiler featuring the new Haunted Daggers, a jungle-themed summoner weapon which impales and rends out enemies. For sure expect more summoner-orientated content to come to the Starlight River in the coming months. Next up is the Stars Above mod that actually recently celebrated its second anniversary and with that came brand new sprites for Asphrodini and Eridani. There was also a lot of weapons that were released including the Sanguine Despair, Sunset of the Sun God, Maniacal Justice and Supreme Authority. As well as teasers for upcoming weapons such as the Kara Yumi's Favor. Shock and all. Dream is Inkwell and the Trick Spin Two Step. Bury the Light was also teased to be reworked in an upcoming update, with the creator stating more existing weapons will get globs to match the modern style of the mod. And since we're on the topic of upcoming content, we also have to mention the new Stellar Spoils. 
They aim to add more items and accessories to the mod. The upcoming Stained Silver update will include a rework to the Warrior of Light, with the core mechanic of Absolute Summoning, testing your reactive and mental abilities. I was a big fan of the Tsukuyomi rework that utilized the fantasy of Aspect the Weapon, so it'll be interesting to test this fight out as well. And finally, for the last mod on the list, it's the Thoria mod. Progress has been slow recently, but we do have a little spoiler showcasing the rework UI of the Wishing Glass, a hard mode quality of life tool that allows you to teleport to major locations of your world. So that was basically every content mod recap. If your favorite mod wasn't included, comment it down below and I'll add it to the next episode. Goodbye.